happy Saturday. How are you guys doing? Yeah. How are you guys doing since the last time we connected? Same. 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 <laughs> uh, just blessed. No, right? Not We're too still much here. Change. Yeah. Oh, what do you know? We got someone whose video is not on. Um, go ahead and turn on your turn on your video. And your I'm audio. Oh, alive. we got reinforcements. <laughs> oh, what's this ace in the hole right here? <laughs> Hi, everybody. <Hey. laughs> Based off the last session, you all said it was too much testosterone on here. So I called in cute reinforcement, who mm -hmm. is extremely smart, beautiful, and has some stories for y'all and some questions. Ooh. But this is my girl, Cassandra. Cassandra, say hey to the fellas. Hey, everybody. How are you guys doing? Good. Hello, Cassandra. So this should be a very colorful session that I am definitely looking forward to. And um, I just want everybody to get warmed up a little bit. So, you know, the trainer in me has uh, activity for us. So I'm going to share my screen really quickly. <laughs> and I want you all to, let's see, we're going to play an activity. It's called No Second Guessing. So you have to say exactly what comes to your mind. Can everybody see my screen? Yeah. All right. So with this activity, you're going to see or he you're going to see a picture or hear a slogan. And you just have to say the first thing that comes to your mind. Don't filter it. Don't. We want to know exactly what comes to mind first. OK. Let's do it. All right. First one. When you hear the word passion, what comes to mind? Honesty. Love. Ooh. Passion. Sex. Crazy. Say? I say crazy. <laughs> he said crazy. So I heard crazy, yeah. intimacy, love. What else? <laughs> I said Honest. sex. Sex, I, I would say high energy too, man. High energy. No. High energy. All right. Next yeah, that's one. what I that's what I mean by crazy. High energy, like. <laughs> you know, there's a yeah. big difference. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next one. Mental health. Important. Misconception. It's conception important. I think it's yeah. I think it's important. Mental health health is 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 real big. If your mental not right, then a lot of things because could you can see things way different than how it's supposed to be. Mm. It's okay. overlooked or disregarded. Mm -hmm. An epidemic comes to Empathy. mind. An epidemic. Oh, all right. Next one. Eyelashes. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> What's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear eyelashes or see eyelashes? Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, ridiculous. Um. Curtains. What you <laughs> I said curtains. <laughs> Curtains, <laughs> butterfly wings when they're overdone. <laughs> oh, you all are a mess. <laughs> you ever seen him on the front of a car? <laughs> oh, <laughs> the the front of the yeah. <laughs> no, I would like to keep it that way too. <laughs> all right, next one. When you hear, we need to talk. Uh oh. Serious. Okay. What happened? What happened? I, I I'm reflecting because I, I'm in some trouble. I did something. So reflecting comes to mind. Okay. Or I'm in trouble. 
<laughs> right, next one. Marriage. You and in. Partnership. Union. Definitely union. Okay. Union. Partnership. Okay. Next one. Waste trainers. <laughs> Did you say waste trainers? Why Jomo laughing? Uh huh. Hey, I mean, I say helpful. I, swear, I, I say helpful. Trainers, so um, it helps. It, yeah, they're not bad. To... Yep. They're not bad. Yeah, it does help. Assist. Yep. Yeah. Assist. <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind. First thing. Yeah. Okay. Picture a hand of lettuce, all right? Let us pray. The first thing comes to my mind, let us pray. <laughs> you hear I'm pregnant. Congratulations. It's to you, Mark. Like, they're telling you, <laughs> you that they're pregnant. Like your your you, wife. Oh hell no! It's a big difference. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maury. What'd you say? Maury. Maury. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Maury. <laughs> hey, I just heard though. I got a seven month old. I just heard that word. You know, about a year and a half ago, I'm pregnant. So pure uh -huh. excitement for me. I'm still very excited when I hear. It. Oh, I heard it for the first time. Enough, you know what I mean? For me. Oh. So when you first heard it, you didn't think the sky was falling. You were actually really excited. Oh, we planned that. That was planned. Oh. <laughs> oh, so you're so, the five percent that gets to plan when you have kids and actually have them. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so I didn't. I can't hear that word and be shocked by it. I just can't. got it. So when I hear that word, actually, the other word comes into play as in, we need to talk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're a mess. Yeah. I think this is the last one. So what comes to mind when you hear Black men? Black Miss men? What'd you say, Cassandra? You said Black men? Yeah, when you hear Black men, what comes to mind? Oh, I have a lot of thoughts about that. <laughs> you say? Oppression. 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 Okay. Targeted for me. Targeted. Mm. Okay. Misunderstood. Sandra, you want to give me one of your thoughts? Yeah, I'm just going to say I see strength in my Black men. Mm. Okay, Joe. Yeah, yeah, when I hear black man, I hear king. Yes. All right. Okay, all right, not bad. Let me close out of that. I like that little activity just to get you all warmed up. Um, we about to jump into these conversations. So yeah, when I hear black man, I hear king. I want to uh, thank everyone for tuning in to us today. We're so excited to just be in your living rooms and your houses as we embark on this juicy conversation with these four gentlemen and my homegirl, Cassandra. Again, we're gonna be transparent. We're gonna keep it real. And please remember that these are their thoughts and our thoughts. So, um, you know, don't come for us, but uh, we do want your participation in the chat. So if you're already in the chat, letting us know your thoughts, how you're feeling, um, who you're vibing with, who you want to debate, feel free to let us know and we won't engage with you all. But um, fellas, we just had Mother's Day, you know, uh, about a week ago. And um, I'm curious to know, we're going to start off with just some acknowledgement around the mothers. What is a quality from your mom that you look for in a woman? All right, I'll go first. 
Um, authenticity. Um, I find that rare nowadays. A lot of women are like made in China. But I'm not talking about the physical attributes. I'm talking about mental as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. You said they're made in China. Yeah. <laughs> I have not heard that before. <laughs> okay. Hey, Thank Chris, you, Chris. Good thing. Hey, you can't tame Chris. No. <laughs> Who else? What are some what are some qualities from your mom that well, you look the, the for? One that, the, the one that jumps out to me the most would be the fact that I never saw my mom wear like dresses above her knees. She was extremely, I mean never one time I feel wear a dress above her knees. Not to say that there's anything wrong with it. It's just that the standard that she set for for how to properly dress herself was so was so high. Yeah, that's one of the first things that I look at. If a woman covered up, that has a lot of stuff being self-respect sent back to her. So mm. that's what it is for me. Okay. Um the biggest I gotta say, my mom, she was I I, I think I see TV seen... on. Hold on, I'm sorry. Is someone's TV on? I probably mine. I'm moving to another room. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. I'm sorry. Nah, my mom, man. My mom, like uh uh the God truth, I probably see my mom cry three times since you know, and for, to me, I just always see her as a strong, the strong human being. So a lot of times I catch myself, you know, not really having much empathy for certain things because I'm like See my mama, you know, do it, you know, and, and ain't really cry. But as you get older, you realize that, you know, she may have done things behind closed doors and not to see it, not to see it. But sometimes I look to that because I think in the world that we're in right now, there's nothing more sexy than a strong black woman, mm -hmm. or a strong woman, period. And I think that's that's what I look for in a lot of women. Mm, okay. Mentor? Quality? Uh, uh Mm-hmm. Quality well, from the mom. Yeah, I've answered the question about the mother. Remember? Yes. Let the me dress below. The dress above no dress above the knee, right? right. <laughs> Let me so jump to conservative woman. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna jump to Cassandra because Cassandra is actually a mother of two boys. Um, her oldest is a senior who just graduated and has a full ride scholarship. Congratulations! To the, is it Louisiana LSU? I don't want to get to school wrong. Not, not LSU, Louisiana Lafayette. La, Louisiana for football. Yes. Woohoo! Yeah. Yeah. So kudos to you. I know you were super excited, and I need the blueprint on what you did so Jace can follow suit. Um, <laughs> but as a mother of two boys, like what has been the experience like for you? Ooh, it has not been easy. And just like Joe, um, I, ha I have a problem empathizing, sympathizing with women who make excuses for being a single mom or, or whatever, because I am a single mom of three. Um, I've been diagnosed with cervical cancer. I was in school studying for a bachelor's while in the hospital having surgeries. I finished school and work taking care of my kids. So um, I've just been their support. I, I, they do all the work and I am there with them. They say I lecture them every day. We have a, a talk every day. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure they're gonna have a, a book of my sayings, whatever I say to them on our, our family talks, they call them. Mm. Um, I just tell them every day before they leave the house, don't get out worked. That means mm. don't get out worked on the field, don't get out worked in the classroom because you can't have one without the other. Yeah. Wow, I like that advice. That goes for everything. Yeah, yeah. it does. Don't get out of work. That's what I tell them. Mm. When you said that, I saw my mama. Mm. <laughs> so that's the type of stuff she told me. She was like, you get in a fight in school, 
I bet not hear you got beat up or you getting beat up twice today and stuff like that. <laughs> she was no no nonsense with a with a lot of things. And I think that's what made me I am. And I look at the world differently like that because I'm not gullible to a lot of things. And I think, you know, and I thank my mom every time. I just told her today, like, hey man, you know, I just thank you for, you know, giving me the right guidance. And, you know, it feels good. So we, we talked about the qualities you look for in a woman um, from your mom, but also how has your mother figure impacted your view of women? Uh, the biggest thing uh, my mother figure is probably don't jump to conclusions. Mm. Don't jump to conclusions. Don't 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 just for just anything so soon. Mm -hmm. always, always keep your guard up. You know, always you know stay smart. And it's not to knock women. It's just period in life. You know, people people change with time. Mm want to mm -hmm. fall victim to that so that's that's something that goes hard hey, mama dukes yeah. all right <laughs> mentor what you got yeah. <clears throat> well um you know for men it's like phases so in the beginning maybe a mama's boy and then you know that teenage 20s era you know you try to you try to shake yeah, that like yeah, well, if somebody well, calls well, you a mama's boy you know, now it's not received quite as well. Mm. So you, you now, now it's like a, a, a phase there. And then the older you get and you start to have friends and family that, you know, lose loved ones. You start to see people lose their mothers. Mm. You realize how valuable a mother is here. And yeah. then you turn back into a mama's boy. Not, 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 then you become proud of being a mama's boy again. Yeah, I will raise my mama. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but, you know, after... Those three phases there, I think the most part would, you know, I would learn from a woman who would have these attributes of my mom. The most, for the most part, it would be spirituality. Mm. Yeah. She was extremely about the Lord. Mm. You know I mean? Yeah. Uh, Sunday, you know, Bible class, Wednesday, prayer meeting. Thursday, right. <laughs> That, that type of stuff. <laughs> it doesn't have to be extremely religious, right. but it's not. It's only two spirits, you know. And from running the streets, once you can see that it's an evil spirit out there, mm -hmm. there has to be a good spirit in it. I have to see that in a woman because that'll mm. be a, a direct correlation to my mom right there. Once you love yeah. the Lord, I know my mom is gonna prove of it. Now she's gonna be all right. So you touched up before I go to Chris for his insight. You touched on, you know, just the path of being a mama's boy. And sometimes as women, sometimes, um, that mama's boy is hard to date. Oof, it is hard to date a mama's boy because sometimes, I'm saying sometimes, if that father is not in the life, then that son plays a couple roles. <laughs> Yeah. And, um, you know, as as the girlfriend or even the wife in some cases, uh, that mother's, that um, mama's boy sometimes is the boyfriend to their mothers. Um, and it, it's a tough, it's a tough balance. We, we don't want to overstep. So we look at the guy to say, so what you going to do? You know, <laughs> it's a, that's a whole nother topic. Cassandra, that's I see an, you laughing. What are your that's thoughts? an excuse. For, that's an excuse yeah. for a man. Yeah, I don't think I don't. I don't. As a man, I'm a mama's boy, and I don't believe that I my I'm have my mom in competition with my relationship or let her let her right. dictate my relationship. Yeah, and if yeah. a female feels that way, I mean that mean communication is lost because the first thing I will let you know is that my mom doesn't dictate my relationship. You can't be my mom. You know, mm, right. but if, if she doesn't like you, she's going to have to get to like you. Mm. This is my relationship. And once you lose that control, yeah. you know, I think that's kind of lame. And I think that's an excuse for a man. I would have to agree. Uh, Cassandra. <laughs> so I, I agree with you, what you're saying. Um, I do know. And from my experience, um, 
if a man does not have a good relationship with his mother, they're not good for any woman, period. They struggle mm. with relationships mm. and how to communicate and treat a woman. Mm. So being a mama, my youngest right now, he's 15. He'll tell you, I'm a mama's boy and I don't care who knows it. I'm her big baby. I still cuddle with my mom. Like he'll tell you, he doesn't care. Mm -hmm. Um but you still have to have that balance as well. So he doesn't think that he, well, he does think he's my boyfriend. I ain't even gonna lie, he does think he's my man. <laughs> I have to, to remind him, boy, I am your mother. You need to chill out. But yeah. um, that, that bond, the relationship that a man builds with his mom helps them in their relationships with their girlfriend or their wives. That's just my opinion. Without it, they're gonna struggle. That's a great point, Chris. Hey, listen, I had a little surprise arm um, distraction from my daughter. So things got a little obfuscated. So let me just hear what the initial question was. Yeah, no problem. How has your mother or mother figure uh, mm -hmm. impact your view on women? Um, definitely. Um, respect. When, when I say respect, never hit a woman. Never, no matter what, and I find that valuable. I found value in that. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, on the contrary, how has your father influenced how you view women? Mm -hmm. I was raised by my dad. So. <laughs> you talking to me, Alicia? All right, generally. All of you, how did your father influence how you view women? Unconditional love. Yeah? Yeah, that's what I see my father have from my mother, so. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And, thin. and they've been married for how long? 50 something years. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Joe. Uh, my dad just showed me that, you know, always take care of home. Mm. Always make sure that, you know, you know, if, if she's falling, you, you catch her, you know. Um, and I see my dad actually do it from prison. Um, mm. you know, so for me, it's just like, you know, he always made sure that home was taken care of. You know, I, I can remember some times where we'll just get stuff and, you know, it was from him, you know, I don't ask him how it happened. I was a kid, but now I look back on it. It's like, he was, Mommy, this is he was taken care of. So that's, that's one thing that I learned from my dad. Mm. Please, what your okay. Eric say, 100? I mean, just a little bit, just a little 100. <laughs> I figured it was fitting for the day. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to us, mentor. My biological father, I'm not going to get on here and bash him. <laughs> I'm just going to say that he wasn't in my life like that. But thank God for my grandfather. Mm. Wow. Mm. Um, Bahamian man uh, used to be able to swim from one island in the Bahamas to the next. Very strong. Really? A lot of, a lot of quiet strength was wow. in that house. Worked work several jobs, never wanted to have large, large arguments in front of the children. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, it's, you know, with my uncles and aunties, it was eight, nine kids in that house. Mm -hmm. It never publicly argued, always went into the room to settle things. Um, so mm -hmm. the amount of respect that he had for women was ridiculous. Wow. It was ridiculous. Okay. So I'm glad I was able to get that example from my grandfather, even though my father was not. Got it. Cassandra, you're saying that you were raised by your dad. Yes, I was raised by my dad, my da um, four girls and one boy. Um, so family, he, he taught us that we're all we have, you know, mm -hmm. it's strength in the family. Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay. All right. So let's shift gears just a little bit. Um, question for you all. You have three choices. What do you think is the hardest thing to say to your significant other? A, I'm sorry. 
B, I love you, or C, I need help? <clears throat> See, I, I need, need help. help, Lord. I need help. <laughs> I need help. help. Please. help me, Jesus, help me, please. <laughs> Yes, because you know why? Nobody wants to seem vulnerable and weak. And um, like, I, I, I know it's hard for me to say that because I don't know. I'm a, a single mom. I've been independent trying to raise these kids. At telling someone I need help is like I'm failing. I'm failing myself. I'm failing mm. my kids. Like, it's just, it's, it's rough. It's not an easy thing to do yeah. at all. Wow. You right. You right. Especially when it comes to that money. We might need help cleaning something up or washing this or that, but when it comes around the time to ever having to ask for a dollar, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. oh, oh. And we're gonna make something. We're gonna figure this out. We're gonna tomorrow. figure we it out. It out. <laughs> I'm not about to do that. Something's gonna be put on hold. I'm, I'm gonna even now with getting everything ready to send my son off to school. Um, it's been crazy. Uh, we've had a lot of family, you know, give gifts and a lot, you know, everything, but it's, it's still, I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, I got to get him out there. We got to drive out there. Do I rent a car? Do I ask somebody to do that? You know, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, Chris, what about you? Which one is the hardest for you to say? Yeah, I'm so transparent that if I need money, right. <laughs> ask me if I need money. And so, I mean, <laughs> I have no problem with any one of them. I love yeah. you, I need help, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Joe? I need help. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I want to adapt that mind frame, like, uh, like she said. It, it's crazy because, you know, sometimes you put yourself in certain binds, but your soul so <laughs> just not to ask anyone that you find, you find a way. Yeah, like <laughs> I refuse to let somebody think that or some because people people are weird, man. It's like if you some people you ask them for help and they'll get you down the line. Like I've seen it happen so many times that I've just had that mindset. Like yo, I ain't I don't never want no one to ever say that I needed them for anything. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Like it's don't don't help, help me. People. Yeah, don't help me now and then like have it over well, my head. Listen, though, but listen, 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 listen. If you help me and you want to throw it back in my face, guess what? <laughs> One man is an island. Okay? So, whatever. You needed help too. So, if that's it, it's not, it's not, that's not a, a, a blemish on my character, that's on you. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because you're doing it for some with some type of ulterior motive. But so I really mm -hmm. don't, I just give respect where respect is due. So I don't waste my energy on feeling away because you did something for me. I needed that at the time. Thank you very much. No man is an island. Yeah. Okay. All right. A, per a person can do more than just throwing it back in your face too. Sometimes they get on the phone and tell somebody before they even gave you the help, right? Oh. That's really on the yeah. phone. Can you believe this? More phones, <laughs> right? And they know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh -uh. right. Yeah. And have a whole nother story of why you are asking for something. They shouldn't be doing this or doing that when they have no idea what's actually going on in your household and how you manage mm -hmm. your finances. They'll create a story evolving around why you ask for help. For real. <laughs> but you know what's crazy with that mind mind frame? I guarantee you that that if somebody asks us for something we give and we don't ask, them, we wait till they get yep. back to us. We don't ask them. Yeah. So too, yep. I'm not asking you for what you owe me. No. Yeah, you know you owe me. All right. <laughs> I ain't gonna ask you, but we're gonna bump, we gonna bump into each other one day. <laughs> <laughs> Calling you, I'm not asking you know you owe me, but I'm gonna give it to you. Right. You know, so it's, it, it, it's it, yeah. Okay. Hey, Alicia. Yes. So I, uh, so listening to the comments, and I don't know if we've kind of gotten off track of what the question was, asking for it from your significant other. 
It's which one is the hardest that, thing to say to your right, significant right, other? Is yeah, it um, to your significant other, and it and it kind of sounds like we're talking about other people mm-hmm. and not just our significant other of these three things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it could be much of the same. Sometimes for your significant other, well, let me throw it out for you all. Is it the same with your significant other as far as it being I need help? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the <laughs> Cassandra whole- said, uh huh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Joe, yeah. is it the same? You know, what a, what a lot of tone is just like I'm not gonna. I'm good. You know, I'm good. I got it. You know, I'm. Mm-hmm. You know. For me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're supposed to help me, and I'm supposed to help you. <laughs> well, a lot of see nowadays. A lot of women, I'm not going to say all women, but there are some women out there who are gold diggers and that's what they are in a relationship for, for that man. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to somebody like myself, I'm not asking you for help just because I can't, you know, just because I'm asking because I can't do it for myself at that time. But a lot of other women are like, no, I'm going to see what I can get out of him. And a lot of men are broken by that. They're scorned by that. So it's, I don't know, it's hard for me to say, yeah, I need help from you. I I just, I I can't do it. And I feel like if I'm in a relationship with you and you know my situation, I shouldn't have to ask you for something that you know I need. I was going to ask you that, Cassandra. I was going to ask you if, what about if, you see the situation, but you offer the help, you know, but you already answered. I, yeah, I offer the, I offer the help all the time. You don't even have to ask me. I just be like, what do you need help with? I, I see you going through this. What can I do to help you? Right. But what, what about if it's offered to you? The help is offered to you. You're taking it. Are you able to receive the help? It's hard for me to even accept <laughs> wow. it. I'm not, no lie, it's hard for me to even accept it because then on the back end, here you are with somebody like you. You said, "Oh, now they're going to throw it back in your face." Yeah, mm. but listen, to Cassandra. Sometimes, you know, is God helping you? Know, sometimes it's bigger than the person. Yes, and you're absolutely in right. In mysterious ways, so sometimes, in our men, just mm. open up your arms and receive. Yes, you're absolutely. Hey, I, I'm getting better with that. I am getting better with it. My sister will tell me all the time, "Girl, receive your blessing." I'm like, okay. <laughs> or you can, or you can leave somebody hanging and be like, "I'm not gonna get in the middle of the karma that got between you and God." That's y'all karma. <laughs> you can look at it that way too. <laughs> yeah. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm just joking. But seriously, yeah. um, emotionally, emotionally is sometimes the hardest thing to ask for help for mm-hmm. for men, though, because we 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 shut down a lot. We hold a lot of stuff in. We're very um, really. I couldn't. We, we don't like to open it. up sometimes. <laughs> we could be having a bad day, having a terrible day. And um, that hug and baby, I understand. And to listen and all of that, sometimes we need help in that area mm-hmm. to diffuse the type of day that we have. Because if you give us some time, okay, we may not just tell you what it is right away. But if you get us talking and open up, eventually we'll be, you're gonna, we're going to get to the meat and potatoes as to why <laughs> we're emotionally distraught and would need this at some point. So um, emotionally be the toughest thing to ask for help. And that's all pride when it comes to men, you know? Mm. Okay. Mark, would you like to give yours? Um, yeah, I have nothing on this. I, I don't have an issue with asking my uh, significant other for either three of those. Out of the three, the one that probably the most challenging is I need help, but really that's, yeah. I think I haven't learned from the first marriage. The second marriage, um, you need to set up uh, ex- um, expectations. expectations. Yeah, mm-hmm. expectations of knowing, hey, you know what I, I'm bringing in, you know what need to be done, what they need to be taken care of, you know what I'm uh, fully capable of, and not, I guess, go in as if I'm the master of it all, and I'll, you know, because sometimes we put that burden on ourselves as men, 
that, uh, you know, I'm the go-to and uh, I, I can't, it's a sign of weakness of uh, asking for help, you know, but I learned that my first marriage, second marriage, no, it's, it's everything is good. So I, I really don't have an issue with either one of those three asking it from her. Okay. All right. So let's, let's ask. All right. So why will a man date and even sometimes live with a woman, but be afraid of committing to marriage? <laughs> What happened, Cassandra? Ooh, girl. Um, I don't know if we have enough time for that. I will go to somebody else and come back to me. <laughs> All right, I'll say this. Um, it's a, it's, it's like a bunch of variables. So there is the outside influence. You know what I mean, which comes from like this social attached to man you see what i'm saying being tied down hence the, the the phrase ball and chain you know then it might be the fact that you know the divorce horror stories where they come in and take everything that you work for or half or whatever if they deserve it um some just want to be a thought out there you know just <laughs> have the cake and eat it you know so <laughs> The guys want to be a thought? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I call them thought too. Okay. Equal opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, that's pretty honest, mentor. So the question is, why do guys um, spend a significant amount of time staying or living with a woman or being with a woman without getting married? Yeah, like just dating her for either a while um, and or living with her with no intention on or just being afraid to commit to marriage. Because of Jody. It's Jody fault. Jody. 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 <laughs> Baby boy. No. Y'all blaming it on him? I'm blaming it on Jody, yes. It was too, Jody had too much of an influence out here. But seriously. <laughs> It it have to be. It, 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 does, of... it does. It does have a lot of variables because um, mm -hmm. I think relationships are supposed to be what's best for the two people. Don't let the outside uh, world tell you when to get married because folks can know right off the bat. All right, this may only take two three months. Boom, right? let's get married, and I can work. <laughs> and then you have folks that say, "Well, wait a minute, now. Okay, we got a five year plan." I been wrapped up in five years. I don't think you're the one for me. Personally, I think it takes. Does it, it take, doesn't take five, five years, years to figure that it out? It doesn't take five years, to, right? It no. Doesn't. But with the amount of you know single moms out here, it's single fathers out here too. But you know, we're talking about the man right now. With the amount of single moms out here, you know, the Jodies that are going around and making babies and keeping it pushing. You know, they're actually trying to make it look cool to not commit. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it caused the trend of men to, to, to live that way for a long period of time. And we live in a world of followers, man, unfortunately. Yes, we do. And, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, the kids have become such an object of that. Like you look at Sorry to call out names, but it's for an example. If you look at the Diddies and the Futures who have the statuses and the money and the ability to do and get whatever they want, and right. they're just having kids like over the place. You know what I mean? Like just, and it's these children who are the subjects of this very thing. So That's it is heartbreaking. That's exactly what comes out of when a man doesn't commit. If you just stay there long enough, boom, here go a bunch of kids and then the children suffer. That, mm -hmm. That's the end result of that. And I Before. get, okay, you got the money to maybe financially take care of the kids, but it's not all about financial. Um, sometimes it's just having that that fatherly support. Hey, um, hey. Yep. So I, I, I tell you this on that. So the first commandment that was given to Adam. You know, a lot of people think the first commandment was to uh, 
Well, well, I asked you guys, what was the first commandment given to Adam? All right, Bible school studies. <laughs> so the first commandment given to Adam was go go out, multiply, and replenish your right, have kids. Mm -hmm. Men, a uh, man's instinct is to reproduce. That's that's just a given. His instinct, and you all know starting at early age, is just to reproduce. I, I, I don't know how this is going to come off, but I put a lot of the, not blame, but a lot of the responsibility on women who are willing to accept that, I, you know, I'm in love with this guy and just to allow him to bring her into her home, and into his home and have babies and not committing. Because if a woman don't tell a man, listen, you can't have me until you commit to me. Cause, you know, once when you commit, you know, once when you give it up to the man, it, it, the game is over. It's a wrap. Mm -hmm. It's a wrap. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, you want to allow me to continue doing this without any pressure? But if so, uh, it, it's really just a, it's an instinctive for a man to want to reproduce. Mm. If, a woman don't, if a woman don't have, I don't want to say enough, I don't want to say enough uh, respect about herself or just some. Um, Something about herself to say, you know what? No, we're not gonna we're not gonna do this until you show me some evidence of you're gonna commit to me. But I'm not gonna be your baby back. You know what I'm saying? So I put a lot of that on on the woman to say, no, we're not gonna do this. But a lot of times women, you know, they they give in thinking I'll change them. In the end, I'll change them. Yeah. And then three babies later. All right, let me echo. Oh, and you know, and there is some savagery going on right now where there are some women who will purposely try to get, you know, impregnated by folks with money as a paycheck. So I'm not going to pretend like that's not a reality because that has become the new hustle, if you would, um, not making it right. But um, it's, I understand the concept of reproducing and that just being what they're supposed to do but just curious to know like when it comes to committing because you can commit and reproduce <laughs> um I'm, I'm curious to know that aspect Chris I think you were going to say something then I'll go yeah, to I was just going to echo what Mark was saying because it's shared responsibility <laughs> because yeah. some women I know they purposely don't talk to certain guys in certain professions so if you know, you know this guy is a rapper or whatever, what's the probability of him being a hoe? It's very high. And you know, and you signed up for that. Now you decide to have a child with the probability of the father being absent mm -hmm. all the time. So, I mean, it's not just, you know, accountability on his part, but it's also these women because these women, you know, yeah. you know how they are. Okay. Joe? <laughs> yeah, I definitely got to agree with what everyone is saying. Um, I think a lot of times uh, a lot of women uh, turn the man into the, to the what we call nobody, the, the loser, you know, the, the, I regret, the biggest regret, they turn them into that because men are, sometimes men don't think for themselves. So if they see a woman continue to take care of them, continue to put up with their nonsense, continue mm. to still be there for them no matter what. Like, you you hear some of the craziest stories but mm. you wonder to yourself, like, what did you expect? Mm. You know? So it's like, so I got definitely got to agree with that because a lot of men, you know, at some point, they're not doing the thinking. Yeah. Uh, sitting back and they're on cruise control. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Cruise control, it don't stop until you press the brake or the right. gas. Yeah. Oh, and sometimes it's too late. So um, I definitely agree with what the fellas are saying. Okay. Well, I, Andre, I, anything okay. you want to add? Yes, because I was in this situation, okay? Um, we're being transparent about this all. So a little, just a little quick story, because this is a whole history lesson. We could go with this, but um, I was married for eight years and I was divorced. And it, I was divorced in 2008. Um, I did not get serious with someone until 2013, 14, I guess, when I moved back to Texas. And there's certain attributes that, for myself, 
that I would that he had to meet for me to even consider, hey, okay, now I trust you around my children and what whatever. Um, so we were together. Um, he fell on hard times and he moves in with me, him and his son. Um, Lord today. Anyway, so <laughs> they're living with me yeah. a year or so go in and um, he get, we go to court to get custody of his son. I'm in court with him, um, helping him fix his credit, this and that, whatever. And we're looking for a house together and come to find out he goes and he buys a house for himself. And then the lady that we just got custody of his son uh, from, he moves her into the house that he bought. Wow. Yeah, so I, I don't know, and I still to this day, I don't know why um, he chose to do what he did. He'll, he makes some excuse now, but now on the other end of it, he is calling me now that she's living in the house with him almost two years later. Now he's unhappy. He feels like he's in the relationship alone, blah, 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 blah. The, the BS that men try to do when they want to hold on to you like this. And, and not let you move on but because I was in that situation I still don't understand why it happened to me mm. I'm glad you brought some female energy on the show I'm, I just want to say <laughs> <laughs> I mean seriously though I mean that, I mean that, it, that it, it, if, me. it fall, no it's not you it falls under the category you made it too easy for them. You made it too easy for him. Like, I mean, as you, you, you know, you were there before and you know, you were in love and we get it. Um, that's why I say love is a drug. Um, yeah. Everybody come, you know, and it's like, as a man moving in with you, it has to be the other way around. I just think, I, I just- But he fell on hard times, Joe. He fell on hard mean, times. I, I, I she's trying it. to support trust him. him. Trust, trust me, I, trust me, I get that's it, I understand. Girl. But he fell on short time. That's like somebody asking you to borrow money. You ask me to borrow two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. When am I gonna get that two hundred dollars back? So it's like you know you fell on hard times. I'm moving you into my house. So not only am I am I, am I taking bringing you and your son in, and you're invading my space, but I have to take care of you until you get back on your feet sure i maintain everything and a man that's just like sitting on the beach sipping lemonade you know so when being they get that we were in our, this relationship we were not married no but we have been together for a couple of years as a women are natural nurturers i yeah, could i true. didn't feel like i could turn my back how do you I mean, imagine if she didn't you know, it's, it's not about he he knew you weren't gonna turn your back he knew that or he asked you that's the thing he didn't that's ask a, i offered see see that's what you think yeah the moment, he, the moment you realized what was going on that was him asking you and he knew you would think about it because I, me just me you I see you have a big heart yeah and it, it remains the same the nice person never wins yeah I'm, but it's a bunch of fool. I'm not being I'm not being <laughs> bad on you but you're not gonna tell your sons you're gonna teach your sons that if they fall on hard times hey man pick your head up man and just bounce back oh yeah yeah and absolutely I'm saying, allow them to make excuses. yeah and yeah. see the difference so one yeah. second, though. And it's not your fault. It happens to everybody. Chris? One second. Let me say this. I agree with your drama, but you, you, you know, you're kind of shrewd. Okay? Huh? You're kind of on the shrewd side. But listen, <laughs> that quality that you have in you, when we, whenever we, whether you help someone, whether the person is helping mm -hmm. you, when you go into a relationship, it's an assigned risk. Okay? There is no guarantee that would death to death do us part okay and we have to face that reality we have a kind of inept ability to block out certain things like death and all that stuff but you have to just like in life you have to have preparation for death 
right? You have to face that. You have to make sure you have a will, all this stuff for your kids, right? You also have to have preparation for that. But it doesn't mean that you must lose the quality that you have, mm -hmm. which is to help. Because they have a saying in Jamaica, don't use someone else fat to fry the next person. Woo! Ooh. You didn't tell the church yeah. chicken that. Yeah, but, so, but Chris, I mean, I right. was done wrong too. You saw what I'm saying? But I'm not going to take that into my current or future That's relationship. True. You get what That's I'm saying? True. Because now you're not only affected my past, but now you're affecting my present and also my future. And that's my whole life. And time we, is. We understand that, Chris, but really let me ask valuable, you. Valuable medium for me. Let me ask you this, Chris. Yeah. At, at your at you right now, would a could a woman, even though you dating up a fire, could a woman right now come and say, Chris, mm -hmm. move my daughter into your house, and you just openly let them in? Move, move what? Move them into your house. Listen, of course. If I listen, if I am with the woman, like mm -hmm. like Cassandra said, she was with him. We love. We we're together. Of course. Okay. And I but would. But he's also the man, though. Return. So it's yeah. all. I, I, I have a question. I have a question for Cassandra. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's take material things out of the way for a second. Cars, houses, all of that. Um, two people meet each other. If the chemistry is there and they're in love, okay, boom. That's what you have. You have love, right? Okay. Right. Now, something about a person's heart, character. You got givers and takers. Yeah. Now, whole moving thing i look at it differently so my question to you is <laughs> came in did you feel like he took advantage of small things whether that been rent food um all the intangibles or did he come in trying to help out trying to add to mm. uh, getting a job oh, that's a good that's uh, a good you know what paying the light bill right here something, something. Uh, was he, he was you know question. what he was not a bum he was not a bum like that where he just moved that, off of me he was that's he was a giver like he did mm. give and pay the rent and buy food oh. and like he made sure that the house was oh. taken care of i give well, he him was that. a freeloader he was well, he yeah. bought a house he, yeah. bought he was able to buy a house he no he wasn't able to buy the house mm -hmm. until I paid to fix his credit because we, our intentions, we had a conversation That's working together. That's what yeah, you. that was yeah. our conversation. That was hey, your we're going to yeah. build yeah. this thing together. We're going to buy this house, get, you know, for the kids. That was our conversations prior to him making a decision to go the opposite direction. So uh, it, it's like, what were were you? I don't understand if his intentions were pure prior to um, everything happening, or if he had a preconceived intentions of of oh yeah, I'm gonna do that. I didn't feel like he did, you know, when we were in it. But after the fact, and I, you know, you start thinking about how things played out and conversations you had. It's like maybe maybe I did get played a little bit, you know. Just a little bit, right? <laughs> a lot of it. Cassandra? Huh? I, say I want to say one thing, uh, and, and I, I like what Chris said. I, I think he hit it right on the money. Um, you know, everything, just like you said, everything you did, there's, some, there's just going to be some relationship you can't point out what this person intended. You know, yeah. you, you, it's, it's an investment. I like the word that Chris used. It really is an investment. You hoping... Yeah putting something into this and you hoping you're going to get some dividends back. And if yeah. it goes left, all you can do, you know, you did everything you could do. You know, you wasn't being a sucker. You wasn't being naive. It was just somebody just got over. If one yeah. if anybody on this phone call can say that somebody haven't gotten over on them, I'll say you've never been in a relationship. You know, because somebody's going, you know, that that's just life. Somebody's going to yeah. and you're going to give your best intention. But what I like what was said earlier, about the fact, I gotta remember that, Chris, that Jamaican statement. <laughs> and this is something that comes up later in our conversation. What we need to understand is that every individual experience that we have, that's that individual experience. Yeah. So when I hear people say all black men, all white men, all black, no, women, no, no, no. black women, that to me is the most ignorant statement 
a person can be, have you dated all black men? Have you dated all right. white men? Dated all black women? Mm-hmm. So that was just one bad experience of this man who happened to be black. He was a bum. Oh, you're not a bum, whatever he was. When I move on to the next man or woman, this is a whole different person. <laughs> I, I get to Absolutely. That and now I got to, and like uh, my man just said, uh, what's his name? Uh, mentor. Mentor. Mentor just saying, uh, you know, uh, you know, take, uh, look at that person and just be truthful and, you know, be, don't be naive and just be the person you are. Still be the person you are, but don't let that past experience take away from the loving person you are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think that, I, yeah, I know. I'm not going to say I don't think. I know that I won't because I've allowed my t- myself time to heal from that situation. It hurt like hell when it happened. Oh, I'm not even gonna lie; it hurt to my core. Um, but no, I'm I'm definitely over it now. I feel like I've healed from it, and now, um, like I said, he's he's pleading to come back, and that that ain't no way in hell that would ever happen again. As long as you didn't give up on love. I don't know. No, 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 no. If if you if me, if you guys can tell by my personality, I am a very loving and nurturing person. Um, definitely not have not given up on love. I'm still open to it. Um, so yeah, that's Andrew. You still love him? No. I have love for him. I will, but am, I don't love him like that. I don't like him either. But oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't up. like him. I don't like him as a person because um, I feel like right now with him trying to call me and, and do things that he probably did with me, with her, like, you're not a good person. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And no. Cassandra, if you had said anything other than you don't like him, we all was going to come through this phone and grab you by your <laughs> I was about to say, I've never in the history heard <laughs> anybody <laughs> answer the hey. question. Do you love him? I don't like him. I, I've never yeah. heard him. Now yeah, we know you don't. Know. Now we know you don't. You don't still love him. For you. I was coming for you. I was coming for you. <laughs> like, yeah, no. I mean, you. I don't not- like that nigga. I don't like <laughs> him. Don't don't let me sit in the streets either. <laughs> right, you cannot. I don't like the way that, that nigga be breathing. I don't like how he be breathing. <laughs> Look. You cannot say that you don't have love for someone that you were in love with. You can't say that it just wipes out of you and go, it, it wipes off the face of the earth. It, it doesn't go away. You just don't have those feelings up front like you used to. That You always have some type of love. Hey, I, I wish you well. Thank you. Goodbye. I don't wish the death of you or anything like that. But no, dude, I don't like you. Live your life because I'm going to live mine. I gotta say, Cassandra, that's a hell of a scenario. Um, and I'm really thankful that you are the loving person you are because I would have probably lit something on fire. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hearing that plans have made such a U-turn and now the same person we were fighting in court is your housemate. Yeah, it would be, right. God knew not right. to give me that dilemma. <laughs> Not to give me that yeah, one, but um, the Lord, but move on. I commend you, and I also commend you because you're not turning into, and you didn't allow it to turn you into the bitter black woman, right? Because there's enough. Oh of those no! Things. But you and took I think- the lesson from it, and I mean, you're you learning from it, whatever there was yeah. to learn, and you're still going to love, and you still want to be loved, and I think that that's great that you didn't shut the door to that possibility. No, both, I think both men and women going through some mess like that, the drama, you have to allow yourself time to heal mentally, spiritually, emotionally, so you don't bring that baggage into your next relationship. If you right. don't give yourself time, it, you, you're just going to keep going through that revolving circle. You're going to go through the same mess again. And then the new guy is frying the old guy's fat, right, Chris? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for that, Cassandra. That was, I appreciate you being vulnerable that with that. Cause I know that's not easy to share, but you know, we really got to unpack that. And I'm I'm hoping that yeah. and for anyone watching or viewing that just some of the, pers- the perspectives that were shared 
will just challenge them to not stay in the rut. Like you could be yeah. mad at the person, you could be, don't stay there, right? Right, right. right. So we're, we're gonna put, we're gonna kind of change paths here for a second. So I'm really wanting to tap into the mental states of our guys and, and you, Cassandra. Um, this next question, how has society's perception on black men, how has that impacted you? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'll start with Chris. All right, I will say this. Um, and this is, you know, this is my view. The outside, you know, people on the outside of the, the, the black race, view us, and I won't just say men, you know, we're not independent thinkers. In other words, mm -hmm. um, we're more looking for acceptance all the time from a system that doesn't really want to accept us. Mm. So in other words, you, you will celebrate like the first black guy to get something. Yes, celebrate it. Yay! And, and I'm looking at it like there's something dysfunctional about that. But pretty much that's how I look at it. We're not independent thinkers. We don't have our own economic base. We don't, you know, support our own, we support others regardless. So we don't mm -hmm. think the, about ourselves. We think what others tell us to do. Mm. So, most, so, that, so most of them come to me with that type of kind of stereotypical behavior, thinking I'm like that until mm -hmm. I let them know. Oh, you, I'm, you very much let them know, yes. <laughs> I've actually sat in while he let somebody know and it was yeah. quite the delivery. Um, mentor? Um, <clears throat> does, do everybody in the panel remember uh, a rapper by the name of KRS-One? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chris. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, Chris. <laughs> he, um, exactly. He said something extremely powerful. He said, if hip hop had the power to destroy lives, it also has the power to uh, to save people or, or things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Meaning he figured something out, you know, after after hearing, you know, where uh, music has gone to from how it started and where it is now. You start to see um, a glaring difference in programming. Mm -hmm. Programming is, is, is extremely heavy. It's the biggest tool they have. Mm -hmm. And for me to elaborate more on, on that, trust me, it's in the poem. It's in the closing poem that I'm going to do because it, it definitely relates to why mentally we're in the state that we're in as a whole. Right. As with being a poet mentor, I have to look at things from a broader perspective, and the and, and the programming. Remember, we're still trying to get over things that was done to us in the '30s, '40s, '50s, '60s, mm -hmm. and when the drugs came in '60s, '70s, '80s. So you, you're talking about unpacking mm -hmm. a lot. It's a lot of factors. There's mm -hmm. not one single thing to say. This is the reason why black people are struggling. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not one thing. It's a combination of stuff that I'll definitely be elaborating on in the poem later. Okay, so if they weren't gonna stay tuned, I'm pretty sure they're gonna stay tuned now. <laughs> you see what I did there. You um, see what so, I did. Okay, with the commercial yeah. break. <laughs> cliffhanger. Right, cliffhanger. Yeah. Jomo, Mark, how has society's perception on black men impacted you? I'll go to Mark first. Um, it really has um, for my early age, I was always taught that society is going to look on black man as the rule that you step on before you go into the house. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always saw myself working to have to prove myself. Um, so nothing society has done has, has changed that or nothing society is doing to make me think otherwise that they still is a system that's working against us. As mentor mm -hmm. is just saying, uh, I think uh, our biggest uh, problem is that we don't educate our young black men on where we came from and what we've endured. Mm. I don't think, you know, yeah. as mentors saying, you know, you think about 
there, there was a book, a large book written on how to demean and to uh, uh, belittle the black man way back in slavery, how to keep your slaves in check. Yeah. This book mm -hmm. is, and it's still, you know, so when you hear people say today, you'll hear people say, um, you hear black people say, I don't support black businesses because black people just like crabs. And you know where that came from? That was a slave mentality. That was, it was a tactic. It was a right. tactic. Mm -hmm. And that's still going on today because you'll go into a white business <laughs> and then you'll run into the same and, problem and you will with a black business, but you won't say, I won't support that white you're business. You're forgiving with them, right? Forgiving, but you'll but cut us is. off. So why is that? But like mentor is saying, man, it, those roots are so deep. Yes. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be, if, if we were to, if we were blessed to see this uh, uh, generation go on, it would be generations still before we really got away from it. And what yeah. a lot of Blacks are getting away from is actually teaching their young ones where we came from, what Black people had to go through, yep. uh, the struggle, uh, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, even up to 2000s. Yeah. You know, it, like you know, like Kip Chris was saying, we celebrated uh, the first black president, but damn, it was it, it was 2016. My goodness, I mean 2012, <laughs> 2008, and we just getting a black president. Yeah. You know, like, and, and now we equal? Like, no, no, no that's not the way yeah. so, still not equal. Um, so yeah, so in a nutshell, uh, my yeah, uh, societies uh, have not changed my perception. It's it's a constant. Uh, work that uh, when I go out my door, I still know that a police could pull up at any time and, mm. you know, knock me off for just for being black. So that's yeah, there's, nothing, there's nothing that's changed. Raising, raising young black teenage boys, um, I've had, even since they were younger, I let them know who they are. Um, when you walk, when you walk out of this house, this is how they see you but that's not who you are. You won't be what they think you are. Um, and and <clears throat> I tell them, regardless of how they see you, you are a, um, a reflection of me. So I'm not what they see you as, so you're not gonna be that. Mm. Okay. I like that. Joe, you wanna round this out with that? Um, I think it doesn't really have a take on me with society, um, but uh, I got to agree with it. what everyone is saying is really we got to teach the youth um, like like I catch myself a lot of times like I'm, I don't have any kids, but you'll always see me like especially young black boy, young black I don't want to say black African Americans. I, I, I'm always willing to let them hang around me you know I'm willing to take them to go play sports with me. Uh, like I have three three young men right now that I always try to keep keep around me because I, I want to make sure that they do the right things so if they have any questions they can come to me I have my nephew we talk and I, he asks me questions and I don't beat around the bush I'm transparent with him you know and I just keep him around me I try to get them active in sports I try to make sure that they don't ever starve for nothing make sure they understand that they're strong black men and that they can be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Show them the right way, man, because right now we have a lot of people and a lot of things that's going on that's different than how we were coming up. So, and it can really transform their minds. And it amazes me sometimes that I do see how, you know, we carry on and, you know, it's not to, you know, say it's an excuse for what happens to us, but a lot of times we put a lot of things on ourselves and, you know, I, I've been, you know, I, I was a bad kid, you know, I've been to jail, I've done those things. But now at my age, I look back and I'm like, it's not, it wasn't that cool, man. And that's what I try to tell the youth, like, it ain't that cool, man. It, it, it's not the best thing. You don't want to be locked down with a dirt, yeah. small slippers, eating food that you don't know where they cooked it at or just not able to live your life. And that's what I think society, society could do to our brothers. But we, um, I'm talking about everybody on this panel, we have to always make sure that we're we're showing them the right way. We're telling them the right things and making them understand that what they're seeing on TV or what they're hearing, don't believe the hype. Nothing cute about it. You know, Jomo, you touched on a great thing because what I love is that you don't have kids. However, 
you are standing in the gap of those kids who may have fathers or don't mm -hmm. have a father figure. Mm -hmm. And we can't assume that all young men got somebody to talk to mm -hmm. or all young women um, have somebody to talk to. Because quite frankly, we live in a society right now where people just are distracted. They're yeah. so distracted. They're not conversing like they used to. So a lot of information is not being passed down to the next generation because mm -hmm. you rather check how many likes you have or you rather, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody is distracted. So the mm -hmm. fact that you are showing up and a lot of you, whether it's through mentoring, whether it's through um, meeting with, um, your your kids' friends, um, just mm -hmm. filling in the gap because even if they have a father figure, you can't assume that it's the right one or a good right. one. A, right. um, you, you just can't. <laughs> and B, there's nothing wrong. In fact, what is needed right now is that male reinforcement. Um, I learned something recently that kind of explains why the kids treat me the way they do, but... Um, <laughs> They did a research on a baby and the reaction to a mother's voice. And whenever the mother spoke and say, hey, good morning, baby, you know, you would see the reaction of the baby on the machine. Forgive me for not knowing the terminology. Mm -hmm. When the father said the exact same words, even in a lower voice, the baby's response went off the chart in response. Wow. And what that meant is they can say less, right? <laughs> they don't even have to raise their voice, but what happened, Mark? <laughs> they can say less, they, can, they, can, they don't have to raise their voice, they don't have to repeat it. Naturally, people respond to the male voice 10 times over more than they would a woman's. So for men to be quiet and reserved, we can't afford you to be like that right now. Like we need y'all to wake up <laughs> and help us fill in these gaps because not yes. all of us are like Cassandra. Fair enough. Fair you enough. know, not, not all of us are like Cassandra who is successful at raising boys solo or even her daughter. Like just imagine the additional reinforcement that we can have as a society if you know, we just dedicated more time to connecting. I'm not, and this is myself too. Yep. Like I know I could do a better job at just checking in and just sharing some of the knowledge I went through so that they don't have to. Like, here are the questions you ask before you get married. Um, yep. so you know what I'm saying? Yep. Because once you've gone yep. through it, the so goal is to let it be easier for them. In other words, you're saying we need to get women to respond to us like kids do. That's not at all what I said. No, 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 for your sons or whoever you're mentoring is for them to know about the history. Well, actually the black man's story before the his story. You see what I'm saying? Because we only know about the struggles. We don't know about our greatness. We don't yeah. know about dynasties. We don't know about Egyptian. Do not, we don't know anything. It's so true. that's wiped out. So that comes back to the independent thinking which yes. mentor referred to the programming, yes. Mark. It, it's all in that because I see, just for example, I, I'm at my job and I'm seeing black people um, calling Hitler a tyrant and empathizing with his victims. And at the same time, you don't even realize that the same great men, Columbus and all of them were worse. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And I have to explain, like in numbers, 100 million West Africans dying on the passage alone. 30 million Jews died total. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about Aztec, Incas, Mayas, all of them are gone. And these guys are looked at as great men. But mm. you turn around and you said these are great men. And I hear people on MSNBC and CNN saying, our founding fathers, I'm talking about black people. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that's the history we as the founding talk. fathers. So if we don't get that independent thinking in, we won't ever have our true identity and self worth. It's true. Yep. That's, that's very. Important. It's very important. I teach my son that yeah, I'm kind of go overboard with the chemist stuff sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I just want to add one more thing on to the programming and how important it is. Um, TV stations definitely uh, like gold, platinum. And if you own the whole studio, which is what Tyler Perry did, okay, mm -hmm. now now you got now you got control. Okay, yes. let's yes. let's talk about. He, what he did to obtain this wealth to get this TV station, okay? Mm -hmm. He had to put on the dress, play as Medina, and um, in some cases, a lot will look at that as to feminize the black man. Let's just call it what everybody's talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Take the okay? One of the first people that we see do that was Martin Lawrence, though, with Shanene. And before him, it was somebody else. But nobody quite did it the way Tyler did, and Tyler started to run into restrictions himself with white folks. Mm -hmm. So he's like, all right, I'll get a body y'all studio, we'll build my own. So mm -hmm. that because he understands the importance of what programming. Mm -hmm. That that that's all I want to attack. Mm. Yeah, that was Ooh. that was a lot of unpacking there. But yeah. And Definitely. you can keep going. You could keep going with unpacking that as as, as far as yeah. the the unconscious mental training that we've had over the years that our mm -hmm. our grandfathers and mothers and grandfathers and great grandparents passed on and on generations and generations um, yeah. because they didn't really know any better. So. Wait, and that's that's if they talk to you. Like if you're dealing with like uh, some black families, some. <laughs> some Caribbean parents, they're not talking to you about what's going on because you're a child, you need to be a child and you'll figure it out when you're when you're older. But in communities like the Jewish community or even like the Chinese community, they're passing down their heritage and what they know and what they learn. So it, you get to, it's like you get a head start or you get to pass the learning curve a lot quicker with that insight. Oh, my grandmother yeah. told me about something like this. Yeah. Let me apply that. But if we're not talking, it's a yeah. bunch of figuring it out on our own. Yeah. So listen, I could unpack there for a while. Let me move on. <laughs> um, so be honest. How do you react when you are upset? And how do you know when you're not okay? I'm going to start here. <laughs> Let me start with Jomo. How do you know? Like, how do you act when you're upset? And when do you know? How do you know when you're not okay? I mean, when I'm upset, you probably don't want to be around me. Uh, I could really, <laughs> I could really take it like it's not. I'm not bragging on it, but I could really take it to because when I'm upset, I don't want to hear nothing. Anything you said, I don't care what you said. I don't care. I don't care how sorry you are, I, I don't care. And yeah. um, it's not to brag and when I know something is wrong with me, I find myself just really sitting too long. I'm mm -hmm. giving myself too much time to think. And when I start, when I know I start thinking and start, I know I just gotta get up and get out of it. So are you most likely to shut down or like explode? Um, oh, I'm gonna to shut down. Alone. I'm gonna shut down before I explode. Virgo. Um, so you just yeah, need to be Virgo, left alone yeah, for I'm a gonna, little bit. Huh? I'm, I'm, my ears closed. I'm just gonna sit there and <laughs> about it and just say, "Man, fuck it." You know. What it is? <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, uh. <laughs> His mentor. When you're upset, what does that look like? Can I ask? Can I have a moment of transparency here? Of course. Uh, I hope all your moments have been transparent. For sure. <laughs> to be honest, I I'll hide behind a poem. Very good. Uh, all right. No, 
poets, poets get away with murder sometimes. <laughs> I'll take that, those frustrations and anger, write a poem, spit it out there, and folks will go, oh man, that was amazing, that was great. In hindsight, I still ain't deal with them feelings. I ain't deal mm. with them emotions. Mm-hmm. All I did was write it down on the paper, memorize it, and release it. But yeah. I ain't deal with it. And those are two different things. So now yeah. I'm, I'm harboring them feelings and I'm carrying it around and I'm, I'm probably taking it out on my lady through probably ignoring them when I shouldn't be ignoring them. Stuff like that that men yeah. do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I just want to get to a, a space where I stop hiding behind the form mm. or the title, the stage name mentor. Yeah. See where I'm coming mm-hmm. from now? Mm-hmm. It's just kind of, kind of be human sometimes mm. and release it. Do things that, you know, releases tension and anger and pressure and, and pressure. Like go to a gun range, Big Al's gun range on Pembroke. Let off some crowd. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's advertising that club. Do that. No, it'll help. It, it yeah. help. Let off some Listen, crowd. the gun range, the gun <laughs> range helps for sure. That's a great way to release some pressure. You can pressure. take a picture of that person you yeah. upset at and put it. Put it. You could. It. You could even do it mentally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put it on that thing that you're supposed to be shooting. Yep. Swiss cheese it. They have this place in Miami that I want to go to, Smash House, where you literally get to like use different equipments, like a, a sludge hammer, a, a, all sorts of stuff. You just get to break stuff. I would not break anything in my house, but I will break something in a designated house. (laughs) Exactly. I will absolutely go there and take advantage of breaking up stuff to let it out. For sure. Chris, how do you look? Okay, so you're you're very passionate. So when you're upset, what does that look like? Cross, angry, miserable. (laughs) Wait, before you go any further, I've heard of some stories of Chris when he's upset and he literally sees red, like I backed away as he was talking type of <laughs> story. Um, Cause as he's on both extremes, so he can be mm-hmm. extremely passionate and extremely, you know, but when he's yeah. upset, Chris. Yeah, and it, and it actually, well, I'm working on it. So <laughs> now I'll probably get quiet. You understand and I need my space. But what I still need to work on, and I thought I had it done pat, was the man miss me. I didn't hear him. What'd you say? When a man, a man mm-hmm. diss me, disrespect me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I tend to go back to my old ways real quick. So, Ooh. you know, if I check myself, like I was in Jamaica and I almost go off. And then, you know. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, I'm still working on it, but that's my go-to when yeah. I get it. I don't what? know why Americans even try Jamaicans no more. After watching Shatters, <laughs> I don't know why they would even try Jamaicans. <laughs> and you want to know, you want to know who, who <laughs> me the most? It's Jamaican man when they disrespect me. That's yeah. Get under my skin the most. <laughs> yeah, because it's a law that they should know not to do, but when they do it, it's like you're breaking the law. So yep. Can, yep. Like, Mark, when you're upset, do you get upset? I gotta ask, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, does Mark even get upset? Because he's always like, whatever. Um, yeah, when it's, it, it's hard to get me upset because yeah. I, I don't know if it's good or bad, but I don't give that much, I don't care that much about stuff. But okay. So for you to get me upset, it really gotta be about something that's close to the home. Yeah. Uh, like my, the Miami Dolphins, right? No, yeah, yeah, my, <laughs> yeah. That that'll get me raised. Yeah, but, uh, I, I tend to get quiet. I tend, if I really if I really get upset, um, I get quiet, and I just need to get away for a minute. You know, I just I just shut down. So I'm not gonna talk about it. I can't talk about it right then. We we got to come back later on when I really reach that point. But it's hard to get me to that point. But once when you get me there. I will shut down, get quiet, and uh, I will be mm. Cassandra, when you're upset, what does that look like? Um, 
my dad say I'm a feisty little lady. So initially, um, if I feel like I'm disrespected, it, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, it's not cute. It's not cute at all. It's not becoming of a woman because I will go <laughs> off in a minute. Especially if I feel like I've been disrespected, I'm I'm losing it. I'm I'm a Taurus. I'm bullheaded, so I'm gonna. Oh, uh, you're a Taurus. I'm, I'm gonna go about to ask her. <laughs> I'm it. gonna go off. Um, but then after I after I let off my steam or whatever and let it go, I'll I'll eventually get quiet about it and go into my thoughts and I'm gonna think about every scenario and and then start processing it myself. But yeah, initially I'm I'm going off. It's ugly. It right. <laughs> I don't go off, but I could shut down like a pro. I'm not proud of that, by the way, but I could. Yeah, I'm gonna just leave that there. I can shut down. Keep, like keep that. this in mind, though. If you ask four pimps the same question, you're gonna have a diff different answer. That's <laughs> keep that in mind. Right. Pimps don't respond to. Uh, anyway, move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we know mental health can still be considered tough for men to discuss. But what do you think? it will take to progress the conversation forward? Persistence. Yeah? Yeah, pushing the conversation. Okay, Even perfect. Alone. So we're gonna, we're gonna mm -hmm. move, that's what he said, to a weekly uh, session. Thank you. Um, but go ahead with Chris's view of persistence. <laughs> persistence, man. Um, uh, Cause a lot of times, man, it goes back to the conversation we we're talking about um, us and thing it's not just with kids it's also your people your age people that you see around you know sometimes they just need that person to talk to and that conversation that you have with them can be so powerful i mean at least you see it you i mean you see it on a daily basis chris um also mark and the, the job that we work in we see how many people us and you know to us we're thinking man they cool but when you when you scratch the surface like man you you really not not good and you know you just got to have those positive mm -hmm. conversations with them and and make them understand that life is the most precious thing that you could have mm -hmm. um and you know they'll start to understand but if you leave that conversation alone that could be that could be another another brother lost yeah so yeah, it, even it, through that I'm sorry, even through that conversation that you, you have to be open and willing mm -hmm. to acknowledge that I yeah. have I, something's wrong with me. Mm -hmm. Like if you can't acknowledge the fact that I'm, I'm depressed or I'm having anxiety or whatever, it, the conversation itself is, is, is valid. It's yeah, let me build, yeah, let me build on that. Cassandra is absolutely right. I was going to say that because what we need to push forward is educating men because there's this social stigma attached where yeah. you need to be macho and I'm manly so I don't feel depressed so I can't I can't express my feelings to you so we yeah. bottle everything inside and I believe that's what it's supposed to be for a man mm -hmm. when that's that's to our own detriment that's yeah. foolish it's not even pragmatic <laughs> at all you see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's what we need to do. So I, I'm absolutely agreeing with Cassandra on that one. That's where it needs to start. Because people depressed and they're not talking and they're not doing anything and they need therapy. Yeah. 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 Mentor? You know, men, mental health with, with both men and women is so big that yeah. it's impossible to get a number to it. Diagnosis. Not everybody's mm -hmm. gonna go out and get diagnosed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's folks walking around with serious mental illnesses and don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's it's like COVID nineteen. It's, it's the right. same thing. How could you possibly know that a person is mentally ill until they do something so far off the wall? And then it may come in spurts. A person's mental illness, they may, they may only show it like maybe once or twice a month. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you see what yeah. I mean? So mm -hmm. it, the number to figure out how many people, you know, are going through it is impossible. So in that regard, we have to be extremely understanding and compassionate with people and stop like 
being so quick to say, oh, this individual is fake. He's phony. I, I wrote a poem called mm -hmm. Real Fake. And I elaborated on that. It's a lot of people that we assume are fake that probably are suffering from a mental illness and we don't even know it. Yeah. It's folks that don't want to be fake. They don't want to do the things that they're doing. They can't help they it. Can't help it. They, they suffered something so tragic that happened in the relationship years ago. Yeah. Never got over it, never healed. You know what happens if you never healed each and every person you've been with? Yeah. If you never heal from every relationship you touch, it's you a heavy know what bag. Due to a person, there's so it. many levels to mental illness. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. And then there's the ones that that struggle with uh, mental health that you you never see it. They look happy every day, mm -hmm. but when they get home, they they cry or think Travel. about killing themselves. You mm -hmm. never know. And, and we have to look at every day. We don't know what someone's going through and be compassionate with everybody we encounter. Yeah. Suffer in secret. Uh, yeah. And those ones are the scariest ones because you can't, you don't, don't know when to help or how to help because they're not giving you any kind of signals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, I just really wish we could find a way to make mental health cool for our community. Um, because we like things cool, right? We like things yeah. to be hip and dope and, you know, we like that. And I think it just starts with us, even as the, the regular, I mean, we're far from regular, don't get me wrong, but what <laughs> I mean is us just reaching out and coaching, like a lot of us know how to coach and to just ask those questions to get to not the how are you doing today questions, but you know, really spending that time to just make sure our circle is okay. But um, I, yeah. it is going to take persistence and it is going to take compassion and just being, having that extra layer of understanding and being less quickly to judge as mentor mentioned. Um, Mark, is there anything you want to add? No, nah, I think you guys kind of hit on everything I would have said also, just communication and persistence. Yeah. All right. Um, we got like, just a couple <clears throat> more questions, but I have to bring this up. Um, so, and I know he wasn't the only one, but I'll admit that the death of Kobe was rough. Um, it was rough to witness. It was rough to see. It was rough to see what it did to our men. Um, it was rough. Um, I felt like the death of Kobe gave black males permission to express themselves emotionally, publicly. Mm -hmm. This is the first time you're seeing like coaches and athletes weeping like a baby in front of the camera, right? The cool guys, the, the guys who got it all and the guys who were polished and, you know, too cool for school, babies. Right and and rightfully so. Um, how did the death of Kobe impact you, and what did it make you want to do differently? Uh, the death of Kobe, I think it, it impacted me in a way of just saying, like, man, like it was just talking about him exactly the night before because LeBron broke his record, mm -hmm. man. Um, I don't think it, I don't think, I don't think it impacted uh, people. Um, I think, I think when Michael Jackson died, I think I seen a lot of people that I didn't think that I didn't think were, you know, were those stone cold cries. Like I seen them boo hooing. Like I remember walking into the job and looking up at the team, they say, and people just crying yeah. and customers crying. And it's like, Michael Jackson is dead. And Kobe just reminded them, reminded you that man, life is, life is, life is short, man. You know, you you don't really get a you don't get a replay in life. You don't live it live it to the fullest because you never know, you never know you know when it's your time or when that time comes. So you don't want to live with any regrets. You want to go out, you know, making sure you accomplish everything you want to accomplish, and mm -hmm. you happy about a lot of things, man. You spend more time being happy than more times being upset or sad about things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark. <clears throat> Well, I gotta tell you. Uh, so, Kobe's death really didn't impact me at all. 
And I'll tell you the reason why. Uh, so out here, I attend a Bible school uh, that was led by one uh, Dr. Robert Harris. And he always had the insight of telling us and preparing us for things that was getting ready to happen. And he would say, and that one, and this before, uh, one too long before Kobe, uh, Kobe uh, the demise, he said, we'll care more about somebody that we have, we think we know, and we really don't. Mm -hmm. And people around us are dying left and right, and we almost don't shed a tear. Mm -hmm. So here, so out here in LA, the, the town was in purple and gold when COVID died. Purple and gold on the buildings they had at 24 and 6, right? Uh, people out there in front of Staples Center, they boo crying. And and it's almost like I want to ask them, what's COVID middle name? What did mm -hmm. was his favorite color? Right. You know, so we, we, we think we know these celebrities. So these celebrities, they die. And we think we know them because they're in our house on our TV. But then we have auntie, or uncle who died and left a child or died with the child. You know, we'll have people that sit within our family that will die. We probably shed a half of it. Mm. So what it, I guess what it showed to me is just how uh, unattached we are mm. to reality wow. and how yeah. attached we think we are. Like we think we know Michael Jackson. We think we know Prince. And I was a big Prince fan. Yeah. When Prince died, I'm like, man, Prince died. <laughs> <laughs> Prince definitely didn't know me, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, and that's one thing that Dr. Harris was telling said, uh, these people don't know you A from Z, but you know they stats, you know they know me, you know they where they came from. So his uh, uh his dying really had no impact on me. I mean, I felt sorry for him. I'm, I'm not saying that I was just like, Ooh, you know, I felt sorry. You know, him and his daughter, I would hate to be in a situation where my daughter or any of my kids would be with me and I can't save them. Mm. Now, and I felt. I felt it was a good thing when I, I don't know if it was true or not. They said it was uh, his, uh, their bodies were found together of him pulling, uh, cuddling her. So that's mm. what the rumor was. And I thought that was, you know, that was kind of like, yeah, that, that, that sounds good. But it really had no impact on me other than, man, we are just so out of touch with what's around us opposed to mm -hmm. things that's way outside of our, uh, uh, you know, our reality. It's true, because I think one of the biggest things for me is, you know, basketball is the thread that is me and my brother's relationship. Like when it comes to me and my brother or my male cousin, like basketball is just that common thread. So to see like how it impacted my brother, you know, it was hard because again, you know, males don't technically show a lot of emotions. My husband was, you know, the men in, around me who were big on basketball, I saw the impact. But what it did for me was remind me, not that I needed the reminder, but it made celebrities human again. And I think our society has made celebrities exempt from being human almost. Mm -hmm. um, and his death, it does, money doesn't save you, statuses doesn't save you, like none of that saves you. And your point, Mark, like we have people in our circle or within our reach who are dying and the same effort or empathy isn't displayed. So that's an interesting point. Chris, mentor, you guys want to add anything? Um, well, I can't say this. Um, I, I, I mean, I have a past and I lost a lot of friends. So and at one point in time, during that time, I even started to become inoculated to it. So, mm. so with Kobe dying, I don't know him. I don't know any, I, I agree with Mark. I don't know any of these celebrities. So I don't even know why I would be crying because I actually don't even know you. But I do feel bad the way it happened with the daughter because that's devastating for the wife and so forth. But it, you know, I mean, all it did was remind me that life is transitory, like Joe said. You understand? We're only here for a short time. So, I mean, that's it for me. Okay. Mentor, you want to wrap us up with this one? Yeah, um, I'm a huge basketball fan. Mm -hmm. You know, huge Miami Heat fan. Uh, yeah! Yeah! Say it again, Mentor. Say I'm not a like like you. Heat. So we don't like the Lakers. <laughs> so we, uh, 
man. We voted against. Yeah, man. We voted against Kobe. Didn't like him. I felt like when he first came into the NBA, he wanted to be like Jordan too much. I can understand yeah. like Jordan. Or he was walking like him, sticking his tongue out like yeah. him. He was yeah. doing so much like Jordan yeah. that it caused me to it, it build a hatred towards Kobe. Yeah. So I was happy to rule against him. As he didn't have his it, own identity. He didn't have his own identity to me. So mm -hmm. to me, he, he came off as phony. But then he started winning championships. And I was like, man, this is the best, phoniest nigga I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, I, I'm just being honest. He, he started not be laughing. My eye. <laughs> the best, phoniest person I've ever seen. Then Shaq left. Then he started to win more. Now, now, now the identity, because like she said, he didn't have an identity at first. Yeah. Now when Shaq goes and he, and he wins without starts to win championships without Shaq. <laughs> okay, now you're developing an identity. Now you can start separating yourself away from Jordan, even though you're still playing like Jordan. Mm -hmm. You can still start to say, all right, you know, you're, you're, you're getting close to iconic status, all right? Yeah. Kobe impressed me way more after uh, basketball. He started um, coaching. He started, the ESPN hired him to do a special called Detail, where he broke down the play of all of the top NBA players. Nice. You know, he, he started doing things like that, and he became, in my eyes, like, yeah. God to me. You had Jordan, and then you had Kobe, one, mm -hmm. one, two. I haven't wrote a poem called Pass Me the Ball, Kobe. All right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pass Me the Ball, but it was in a negative fashion. Remember, I'm a Heat fan. <laughs> so, so I was on Shaq's side. Shaq was complaining, like, pass me the ball. Come, like, you, you can't do it. Right? So I, I wrote the poem in the same fashion. Obviously, I couldn't, you know, I had to stop spitting the poem after he passed away because I can't be out here blasphemy in the man's name like that. So I retired the poem. But, um, yeah, he humanized all of these icons. Like, when he died, he made Shaq human. He made Jordan human. He made LeBron James human. He made everybody go, okay, whoa, whoa wait a minute. These are faces we thought was going to be around forever. Right. We thought mm -hmm. it was going to be in a rocking chair, old and gray, telling the stories and passing down. This is just what we assume. Your brain is just going to assume when you hear Kobe <laughs> Bryant. So when he got taken away, man, um, it was all in God's plan for it to go down like that. Him and his daughter. Yeah. Unfortunately, that was in God's plan to go down in that fashion, to 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 make an example, to make a uh, the example that God needed to make. Mm. Okay. So rounding out our session, um, what advice would you give your younger self? And Cassandra, I'm sure you're going to eat all of this up with the boys that you are so successful at raising um but even as they continue their journey into manhood um fellas what would you tell your younger self not necessarily what you would tell your son um because their path is different but based off what you went through so far um what would you what would be your advice to your younger self i'll start with mark invest in starbucks Invest in Starbucks. Invest in Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> For real. <laughs> For Whatever real. Whatever it would be $6. Um, yeah. I, so what would I tell my younger self? I, there was a, uh, I attend a financial class with a, with a company called Prime America. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about how to invest and pay yourself first. You know, mm -hmm. how to pay yourself first and invest. I mean, they, they taught you so much about investment. And I did not follow not rule number one. <laughs> and, I <wish. laughs> and, and I tell people about it all the time, I did not follow anything. Like, you know, uh, paying, being able to pay off your car and don't get in debt. You know, just a lot of information. I would have, I would go back and tell my younger self that. But, we'll apply it. 
Yeah, just a plan. But now I will say this. I'm going to make this short. Because of where I am right now, right now I am in the happiest state I've ever been. Mm -hmm. And you know that that game that they had on TV where the ball drops down and you're hoping that it drops down in the column that says a million dollars? It's oh, like yeah. the ball drops and it bounces all over the place. It bounces and bounces and bounces. Yeah. You know, again, I don't know the name of the game. Yeah. But if at any point you could go back and change where that ball bounced, it may change the total outcome. Mm -hmm. Because what you really, you really don't care about the, the, the route it took. You wanted to land in the million dollar slot. Yeah. Right. In the million dollar slot. Would you really want to go back and change anything that ball did to get there? Mm. So right now, right now, I'm in a million dollar slot. Wow. So really, I would not change any, all the heartaches, the headaches, the, the ups and downs. There's nothing I, seriously, there's nothing I would change because I may not end up where I am right now. So wow. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I really, and I was just talking about this, this talk. I, I am good. There's nothing I would go back and tell my young self. Okay. Chris. <laughs> Me, I would tell my younger self to stop being such a hothead because it's robbing you of wisdom and prudence. Mm. And I'm not saying, yeah, you know, I agree with Mark, but, you know, along the way, the hurt that I caused, you know, for mm. physical and emotionally for people, yeah, I regret that. Mm. <coughs> That's honest. Yeah. Joe? I would just tell my younger self that, man, you blessed. Hmm. You, 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 you are, you are a blessed individual. What you're getting ready to go through and what you, how you're going to come out of it. Not a lot of people, not you could tell that story. So just understand you're blessed and don't change nothing. Mm. Route like Mark say. Yeah. Mentor. I would tell my younger self um, in 12th grade, high school, American Senior High School. I would tell my younger self to keep that ice pack on my groin. <laughs> keep that ice pack on your groin. Listen to the PE teacher who told you to keep that ice pack on your groin. <laughs> I didn't listen. It hurt too much when I pulled it, and I didn't want to keep the ice pack on there. Mm. That's the reason why I'm saying that. I graduated second fastest in day County in 100 meters. Wow. Mm. I ran 100 meters in 10.5 seconds. Mm. At the reason to be, at the meet to qualify for state is where I pulled a groin, running last leg on the relay team. Mm. Okay, I pulled my muscle and I caught two people. Like I was coming, from, but I was trying just that hard to get the rest of my relay team to stay because I qualified already. Mm -hmm. That's why the coach was telling me, keep that ice pack. You know, you got two weeks to get ready for state. I wow. gave up. I quit on my dream. Wow. I quit on my dream to go to the Olympics because I don't know if y'all ever had a groin muscle before. <laughs> that thing hurt, 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 hurt. And I didn't want to walk around the school with it on. And had I done that, I would have healed up properly. Mm. So let me make sure I understand what y'all saying. <clears throat> uh, Mark, you're telling me I need to make sure my boys understand the importance of investing early. Um, knowing, um, I think, uh, was it Joe? You said knowing who you are, knowing already the going out that you're already blessed. Um, Chris, you said, um, gosh, remind me again what you said, Chris. Chris is muted. Yeah, being a knuckle, being a knucklehead. Oh, sorry, I said not be a hothead. It's reminding me of my yeah. prudence. Not being okay. And then mentor, you're saying <clears throat> listen to the wise of the elderly. Right. Make sure you, you're you're more you're wise about knowing. Take, where take heed to wise counsel. To go. Yeah. Yeah. Take heed and to wise counsel. And especially if you have a plan for your future, yes? Mm. That part. Got it. 
Mm-hmm. Got it. Cassandra, what would you tell your younger self? Um, Lord, today, because I told myself I was never having kids. Hello. <laughs> three kids later. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, when she meets that guy, do not move him and his boy in her house. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell my younger self. Um, to not get married so young. Mm. Yeah, because I got married when I was 21. I had no idea what I was doing. Any, you know, yeah. I got I got pregnant my first time ever having sex, so I didn't know what I was doing getting married. Oh, hold up. That's a whole nother story too. So, but Let yeah, don't get married so young. That's not fun. <laughs> no, no. Okay. <laughs> all right good advice I think I would tell my younger self you're not supposed to fit in and Ooh. I think by yeah. letting my younger self know that that you're not That's supposed very, very. to fit in it would save a lot of the um <laughs> attempts yeah yeah That's an excellent. Yeah. Nice that's one, real yeah. good that's yeah. real good put yourself first and follow your dreams mm-hmm. that sound familiar <laughs> okay mr motivate you know this <laughs> all right so um i'm around this cell what should a healthy relationship provide for the people in it happiness happiness um happiness because it goes back to what we just said where the care we're the main characters in, 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 in our stories. So it's not better than having two two stars in one movie in the movies. When the movie's wonderful, there's gonna be a sequel after a sequel after a sequel until we just can't do any more movies. Oh. Mm. That was romantic. <laughs> um, best friends. For, for, uh, listen. You got to be best friends with who you're going to choose. Yeah. Forever is a long time. You mean to tell me that the person that's going to sleep in your bed next to you that long, that's not going to be the first person you go to where all your thoughts, your secrets, your ambitions, your desires, your dreams, Mm-hmm. These type of things normally fall into the best friend category. And when you can be with a person who is your best friend, oh my God. Change the mm-hmm. dynamics. It changes the dynamics of everything. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Chris? Um, you need trust, loyalty, humor, <laughs> respect, affection, and a healthy sex drive. <laughs> That rounds it out. Mark, would you agree? Yeah, I would definitely say, uh, definitely on the sex drive. (laughs) No, (laughs) that's number one, actually. No, but uh, (laughs) I would say uh, security and support. Mm. Again, one of the things that we were always, uh, we're always being told, you know, love is such a misused word. But I love, I love you as long as you love me. But you stop loving me, I'm not gonna love you anymore. And that's something that was given to us by Dr. Harris. He said, I would rather you say I respect you, you know, instead of love, because love is so misused. But I would say, on a security, because security and support in a relationship mm. that you need to feel secure. You need to know. You know, a uh, uh, mentor is saying, uh, bas- you, and you were mentor to my basketball fan. So I'm, I'm a big basketball fan. In my head, I play basketball way better than I actually do on the court. <laughs> hey, I Look, I, I'm loving the last dance by Chicago Bulls. I'm loving this thing oh, like yeah. nobody's business. And one thing Michael Jordan, one of the greatest basketball players ever played, he had to understand that he had to have a support cast. You can't do it by yourself. And you had to have security, meaning that you had to be okay with, if I give you the ball, I'm okay with you taking care of business. Yeah. 
So in a relationship, for a relationship to work for me, you got to have security. I got to know that I can depend on you. Back to what Cassandra said, what happened to her previously. You, you're going to be vulnerable to the person you, you're in love with all the time because you are going to give yourself over to them. And when you yeah. open yourself up like that, you're open to whatever they, you know, they choose to do right or wrong. You, you left, you left, you, your defenses are down. Yeah. But I need to know that I am that I, I am secure with you and that you have and I have your full support no matter what happens. I got you, you got me, we're in this together. And yeah. and as Chris was saying, respect. So if you got that in relationship, that that's not the basis of your relationship, you're gonna have it. You good. All right. Hmm. All right. So in conclusion. To all our beautiful women who are watching, what would you like to say to them? Chris, wait, who is? Wait, Mark, what'd you say? <laughs> who's that? Uh, who's that saying? Uh, keep your head up. Tupac. Tupac. <laughs> keep, all right, I'm gonna say this. Keep your head up. I would say. Um, yeah. treat, again, treat every person as an individual. Don't make that person uh, become, as Chris said, don't let that person destroy your present and your future. Oh. Take it as a loss. You know, like I, I relate everything to sports. Take it as a loss. That's a loss. Mm -hmm. Then move on. Yeah. But don't bring that, that loss game with you to your next game. Agreed. All right. Joe? Uh, first and foremost, thank you for letting us, you know, for, you know, spending time with us on your Saturday evening. Um, I know there's a lot of other things you can be doing, creativeness, you know, watching TV, going out, fresh air, but you spent your the last two hours, hour and a half with us to listen to our nonsense. Um, so <laughs> to tell you, thank you. Um, but love life, man. If, if this thing, this, this, what we're going through right now then teach you to love life and love each other. I don't know what else will. And so just love life, enjoy life. Don't, don't be ashamed to pray. Prayer is good. All right, prayer is good. You don't have to pray out loud. You can pray to yourself, but prayer is good, but enjoy it while you're here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mentor? More than um, saying that I got a message for him. Anybody that was uh, a part of the first show that we oh, did. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, let me jump to Chris first. Let me jump to Chris, and then I'm going to have you close out with it. I okay. forgot about the, the, the juice. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. All right. You want me to go now? Yeah. Yes, I am. Because it, it's with me and I don't know. Anyway, so... Let me quote Kanye West. You're talking about beautiful looking women, right? Yes. Hello? That's me. All right. All right. Okay. I'm just, I'm just checking. Because I don't know if you mean inside. On the inside. Beautiful souls. I'm, I mean more inside. Beautiful. Yeah. Out on the outside, they get enough likes as it is. I'm talking right. about the ones that are beautiful on the inside and may very much be beautiful on the outside as well. Beautiful on the outside. All right. So <laughs> because this is, this is it, this is it. We have to be real. We have to be real. It don't always <laughs> coincide when you, I'm going to quote Kanye right now. I'm going to quote Kanye West, believe it or not. Right. Is this pre Wyoming Kanye West or post Wyoming like, Kanye West? It doesn't matter what Kanye West, but this oh, this particular line that he used, which he said, some of the prettiest girls do the ugliest things. Mm. So, so I needed to know if it's a beautiful um if it's a physical attribute, because most of the time when you're beautiful on the outside, you're not beautiful on the inside because yeah. you're self-centered, self-absorbed, and self-serving. Okay. Right? And they're spoiled, and they know, and they can manipulate, and they're used to this, and it's kind of hard for them to be grounded. So, so that is my advice to the beautiful women right on the outside okay 
just take it down a notch, the self-centered ways and all that, because what I see happen is you're going to get older mm. and it's going to fade. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. see them. I see some of them in Jamaica that I know growing up, they used to a certain way, they treat men a certain way, and then now they're migrating because they're not getting the attention that they used to get. Mm -hmm. because the younger ones coming up and then the type of guys that they deal with. But I'm just saying that to the beautiful women. Kind of take it down a notch. You understand? That was very <laughs> unexpected. Um, but thank you for that insight, Chris. And he You're quoted very great Kanye. He quoted pre-Wyoming Kanye. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. All right. Not, not to make America great again, Kanye? Not to make... Nope, not that one. Nope. Um, <laughs> That is post-Kardashian Kanye, yes. All right, mentor, thank you again for letting us in on your thoughts and in your poetry. We always appreciate this cherry on top of the session. And um, yeah, I'm gonna just hand it over to you. Thank you again. Okay, first I'm going to answer the question first before I get into the poem. Um, okay. My advice to women will be this here. I know y'all remember. I know y'all remember this hat. Mm. Yes. 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 Yeah. yes. We don't want to. We tired of fighting. We don't want to fight y'all. Yeah. <laughs> we don't. We don't want to be going up in the courtroom to have master tell us how much child support to pay. Mm. We 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 don't want to fight. like let's kill the separation. Like let's start let's start doing more of this now. Mm. So that that's my advice to women. We just have to find a way to blend and come together. And, and understand each other's differences and make it work. We, we've been fighting for too long. So yes. with, that, with that said, um, how many Sam Cooke fans out there? Come on. Oh, yeah. Sam Cooke? Yeah. OK. Again, I talked earlier about programming. Um, there are ways that we can reverse the programming. It's called reverse programming. So um, I'm a fan of Sam Cooke as well. I took one of his pieces and um, I put a spin on it. Uh, it's, it's the one, you know, that's the sound of the men working on the chain. Mm -hmm. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. That's the sound of the men. Working on the chain. Yeah, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Yeah. All the chairs coming from master bedroom as master sleeps on his pillow top. Watching thugs on TV trying to reach the mountaintop like the BET Source Awards. <laughs> Stepping out of Lamborghini doors onto the red carpet. Now go get your reward, niggas, for sending millions of niggas to the meat markets, the slaughterhouse, the triangle, one way in, one way out, fatherless house. And if you look closely, you can see the master in the kitchen cooking up pain. And if you listen closely, boom, 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 that's the sound of the men working on the chain. Yeah, yeah. Boom, 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 that's the sound of the men working on the chain. Yeah, all the chairs coming from these constitutional lawmakers. Handcuffing the food stamping, EBT in section eight and project taken. Jim Jones, Kool-Aid drinking, crabs in a bucket, poking holes in their boat sinking. Institutionalizing our minds and controlling our thinking of a master plan. Never underestimate the power of the pen located in the master's hand. And if you look oh. closely, most of these tricks are all the same. And if you listen closely, boom, 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 that's the sound of the men working on a chain. Yeah, yeah, boom, 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 that's the sound of the men working on a chain. 
Yay! All the cheers coming from the George Zimmerman camp. Now this story gets me amped up the way he emerged out of those handcuffs. And when the injustice between him and Trayvon wasn't enough, he pulls a pistol out on his ex-wife and she doesn't press charges. What? To me, that's just an example of one of the master sick twisted games. And if you listen closely, boom, 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 that's the sound of the men working on the train. Yay! All oh, the chairs coming from cell block four. Your local neighborhood prisons, you can hear them screaming more. We just want more black faces, please. We want them to, to be under 30 wearing their pants below their knees. Let's take them all to the trap. You know, where the rats get their cheese in, and, and take them to a cell where a dude named Bubba can fix it and turn them into trustees. And, and trust me, these slave masters will bring you down to your knees with, with more traps to fall into than, than Bar Marley blue trees. And, and in the court of law, more probation and more discrepancies in a freedom contract. They used mm. to physically trap us. Now they just get us to sell crack and, and get on some Stevie J shit with the theme song, Return of the Mac. Simultaneously mm. ignoring the fact that our women are emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and sexually under attack, and our kids are being miseducated, misinformed, and held back with the FCAT, and our men are killing each other up in the streets. Will the real one rest in peace? Mm. We're stuck to pick up the chess pieces to play a master sick, twisted game. And if you listen closely, boom, 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 that's the sound of the men working on a train. Yeah, yeah, boom, 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 that's the sound of the men working on the chain. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. In, in I can't even snap, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to. Wow. Just wanna, add this on that um mental illness is real and programming has a lot to do with you know how we were programming out there on the um what you call that the chain game right mm -hmm. you're in prison you're digging and you're this is what we you know how we got programmed yeah. from there on to now and we just need to do every single thing we can to first be aware first understand what's going on like we'll, we'll never be able to change or fix anything if we don't even understand that we're hypnotized yeah. by a lot of different things um yeah. i want to commend you alicia for this platform and everything that you're doing and how you have assembled the right men because without even dishing out the memo all of us decide that we're all black you know <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's kinetic. It's called yeah, kinetic energy. The energy, yeah. right? Yeah. She was a wonderful addition to what we're doing. It's you know, awesome. six thousand views the first time. I don't know what it's gonna be now. <laughs> but I truly, truly even, love even Cassandra way. got it. Even Cassandra got in on the black shirt. Is that a black shirt you wearing, Cassandra? No, it's gray. Okay, close enough. Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> I want to thank you all for just being a part of this um, and just spending time with me and just jumping on board with the vision that I had, like, hey, let's try this. And and you all have been so willing and I appreciate it. I love the feedback that's coming through about how you all's voice, how you all's transparency is really helping to redefine how people have been thinking. And I think that that is the point of all of this and it's through discussion that we're even able to provoke thought. So I thank you all. Cassandra, you were a great addition. Appreciate you coming on. <laughs> Fellas, until next time, I thank you for your time. And to all of our viewers, thank you for spending time with us. And we hope that you really was able to take some things away from this. And um, that's all folks. So have a great rest of your night and we'll be in touch. <laughs> Bye right. guys. Right. Thank Good you. Everybody. All right, Chris. All right. All right Thank you. Bye. Pleasure talking to y'all. All right, Joe. All right, mental. Thanks.